Leon, congratulations on your victory tonight. Um, I know you said you would have liked to get a finish, but given everything that was surrounding this fight and all the emotions, I mean, how satisfied are you with the result tonight? Um, I, I don't know if it was one of my best performances, you know, but um, I thought it would be a, a way more active fight. He just went on his back foot straight away, and I thought, I thought what, what, what's this guy doing? You know, after talking all that shit that he did this week, I thought he'd come out and more and do more, you know, but I feel like he's done it before. He, he, he gets to fight up and just show up and, don't, and just don't show up, you know? You think the game plan that he used was pretty surprising, whatever it may actually have been. I mean, did you think early on, is he trying to bait me into something? Like, is this some kind of game? Like, what's going on here? Or when yeah, did you realize that this is just going to be what he does? Yeah, 100%. Because I, I came out off flux for the first round, you know, and I was, I was, waiting, for, I was waiting for him to charge forward like he normally does. And, um, but I feel like the pressure got to him. I feel like the, the switching the stances, my range, um, it all just, just threw him off, you know, just kind of went in like a little shell. It didn't, didn't, didn't come out of it, you know? Yeah. How challenging was it for you as well to stay controlled, right? Because you talked about being controlled with the emotions of fight week, but then you got to go in there for 25 minutes and be controlled. Like, how challenging was it there to, to keep the proper mindset? Um, very, it was hard, you know, like, even, even to the wanes yesterday, I was, like, fuming and shaking. And, um, but I was, I, after speaking to my mom and my, my coaches and just, just, okay, just, like, fuck this guy, basically, and just focus on yourself. Um, this is what he wants. He wants you to come out there and fight emotional and, like, try swing and, and take it down, you know. So I thought, okay, this is like, I was what he said is fucked up. But let's switch it all off and um, go out and, and do your job, you know. Yeah. The grappling exchanges, a lot of your takedowns seem to come right after his. Did you come into this fight saying, I want to show that I can grapple? Or was it kind of responsive to be like, now nah, I got to take him down? Um, no, nah, it was definitely a, a plan, you know. Um, I, I'm a great grappler. I just don't, I just like striking, you know. But I think I, I, I also I took Usman down, never been taken down for his career, took Kobe down, um, I grappled him. So I feel like as, as I'm learning and growing, I was keep showing more and more of my skill set. I, I've always said I'm, I'm a mixed martial artist. I'm not a striker, you know, and um, tonight I, I was able to do that. I, I outgrappled two of the best grapplers in the, in the division, you know, and um, yeah, as long I was keep raining and keep, keep improving, you know. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk about the exchanges between you guys. I mean, obviously, this is the fight game and people fight, but do you feel like there should be some kind of a limit, like an honor among athletes of like, hey, man, there's certain things that are just off limits that we don't touch with each other? Um, yeah, 100%. 100%. I feel like kids are out of it. I feel like you, a murdered parent should definitely be out of it. It's just like I don't, I don't get how I use that as, as, as a way to sell fight or entertainment, you know. And um, I think, uh, I think that's not like putting him in a shower. I think my reaction to to it kind of like threw him off a bit. And for, uh, no, no one were feeling what you're saying, you know. Like the, the fans turn against him, and the media is like, well, what, what are you doing? I feel, like, but he's a coward, and he's always been a coward, you know. He, even he lost the fight. He keep making excuses that oh, I, I won the fight. Even, even Usman knocked him out and broke his jaw. He's like, oh, yeah, it was Mark's fault. It's all some, someone else's fault um, when, when, he, when he loses, you know? Yeah. As champion, there's always going to be a target on your back. But does there feel like a weight off because of the emotion that was surrounding this fight? Is um, yeah, 100%. Definitely. I feel like um, it was definitely more, one, of the, one of the most um, emotional fights I had, had to deal with for like, um, the comments that he made. Um, but like I said, I got a great support system um, around me, and the defo got me in the right space to go out there and compete as, as an athlete. You know, because in my in my mind, in my body, I wanted to go out there and have a war with him. And um, but when I talked talk to my coaches and my, my mom and everyone, just said, okay, like just shut it all off, um, 25 minutes, and after that you can deal with do do with your emotions after. You know, and um, I was able to do that. Dana was here earlier. It kind of seemed like Bilal Muhammad would be next, being that he's the backup and all that. But Dana said, ah, I'm not ready to make that decision right now. Yeah. Do you see it as like he should be next? Does that feel like an unfinished chapter, or do you feel like maybe there's other options? Nah, there are definitely other options, you know. Um, I don't feel like Bilal should be next. You know, I've, I've done it before. I've won like 10 fights in a row, didn't get a title shot. So what makes him different or more privileged, you know? So um, Kobe's already skipped the line already. So let's see who's next. And um, But like I said, I, I am, this is Rocky's era. This is my era now, and I always keep raining, keep... Whoever's next, it doesn't matter. You know, they're all similar styles anyway. They're all boxers, wrestlers, and this is what I've been, I've built my career on it, you know. So whoever comes next is, is, is whatever, you know. Nice. Last thing for me, we'll figure out who, but is where does that matter to you? Do you want to fight back in England, or, there, or do you like fighting here in the States, Vegas? I, I, love, I love to fight in England, especially now we've got Tom, you know. Like, me and Tom on a card, headlining, co-headlining. 
that way for the UK, that'd be massive. You know, I feel like that's definitely something that we should push towards um, to to just bring more light to MMA in in in, in Europe. You know, I feel like having me and Tom Ted on a card, even Manchester or any big stadium. I think that's what, what we should definitely push towards. You know. Leon, right here in the front. Uh, kind of going off of that, Dana was here and announced the official signing of uh, Michael Venom Page to the UFC. He's going to be fighting Kevin Holland uh, in Miami. So would that be a fight down the road that, you know, that could headline a massive stadium, a big arena in the UK? Um, I don't know. <laughs> he just got to the UFC. I don't think he's nowhere near a title shot. Yeah, I don't know. That's like, I don't know. I think there's way more people that so more close to a title shot than Page, you know, and... Um, but yeah, fair play. Did you see uh, happen to see Shafkat's performance? Because he seems to be the other one that people want to see you fight at some point. Um, yeah, I did. I did. He's, he, he looked alright. You know, um, I think uh, Wonder Boy is kind of getting past it a little bit. He's like 41, 40, 40 years old, and um, obviously he went out there and did what he did. But um, yeah, if, if he's whoever's next, I don't care. You know. So like I said, this is my era. I'll, 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 my aim now is to beat George um, record. That is my my aim. You know. And so whatever get me there is whoever's next. You know. And do you first because before this fight, you said that if you beat Colby, you could first see him retiring because you don't really see him fighting these young guys. But he was in here saying he's going to be here for a while and he wants to work his way back to the title. Do you think eventually you will see Colby again no, down no, the road? No, definitely not. I don't, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Like, this guy says a lot of shit, you know, so um, this is his third shot on a title shot. This one was a given. He, he, he went to fight for the title. He, he beat Masado and then got a title shot. Sat out for two years and got a title shot, you know, so he's a long way away from fighting for the title. I can't see him going out there and fighting Shaft Cats and these guys of the world, you know. Um, he's, I just can't see it happening, so... Let's see. He, 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 just a few minutes ago, he, also, he was here, call, he called out Wonder Boy for his next fight. He said he has unfinished business with him. What do you think of that fight possibly down the road between Colby and Wonder Boy? Um, I don't know. I don't care. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Leon, I, Leon, I got to ask you, were you surprised at how much stronger you were than him in the cage? No, nah, definitely not. I always said, like, once you feel my physicality in the... In, in the cage, it's a big difference, you know. I think Usman felt it as well, and maybe we've got like a skinny waist. Everyone thinks I'm like not strong, but once I got get a hold of you, um, I, I'm quite strong, you know. And I was able to take him down, out grapple him in scenarios, and um, yeah, just keep like I said, uh, I'm, I'm a mixed martial artist, not a striker, so it was good to show another, another level of my game, you know. And how close did you think you were with those submissions? Close, that first of that, that front one where I got around his neck before, before he, um, he spun out of it. That, that was tight, you know, and um, even the triangle, the arm bars, I, I, I was attacking. Um, a few of them was close, but it did um, well to, to survive and, and defend them, you know. And did it feel good because he comes in, he's talking all the, all the trash talk, but towards the end of the fight, people were booing him because they were just so unimpressed by his performance. Did that feel good to really shut him and the fans up? Um, not really the fans, but more him, you know. Um, I expected more. Like, after talking all that, sh like, what you talk, you should come, come forward and fight, you know, you, you don't be a coward and go on your back foot for the whole, for the first two rounds. I thought he was like, trying to bait me in or something. I thought, like, what, what's this guy doing? Um, but I think my, my, my range and my, my, my switch in the stances was kind of throwing him off. Um, but yeah, uh, I think just a coward and he, he showed in his fighting skills, you know. Thank you. Kind of similar to what you just said. Were you surprised that Kobe didn't shoot until the third round? But even when he shot in the third round, it's like a slow ass single leg, you know, I was like, bro, what the hell's going on? <laughs> like, this guy's meant to be the cardio chaos machine. And, um, but yeah, I feel like, like I said, it's, it's a new era. I feel like these, these guys coming up like me under is coming up. They're all just different area, you know, these, these guys, everyone's beat is like the master of the world, rubber lawyers of the world, woodleys of the world. Like these guys are like, what was over the hill when, when they fought them, you know, and um, I believe he's, he's over the hill as well, so. When he successfully landed that take down the first one he did, and when you got up pretty quickly, do you, th do you think that was like a demoralizing factor that played into the fight for him? Um, yeah, definitely. I think like my, my out grappling him, like the I was able to re attack after he, he took me down and um, take him down, and I think that my coach said it's in his face. It's like he's kind of like threw him off a little bit, you know. And um, so I feel, yeah, definitely. Um, me 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 grappling heavy. I think that definitely throwed him off a little bit, you know. If he thought he'd be able to like, dominate me more in the grappling, and he wasn't able to, you know. 
And obviously, Kobe's, when you look at Kobe's past fights, he did face a lot of grapplers and stuff. But I feel like a lot of – some people might have not mentioned that he hasn't faced a complete guy like yourself in a while other than, like, Usman and stuff. Do you think that's something that kind of went under the radar going into this fight? Yeah, 100%. Because everyone has been down as a striker. But I keep saying, like, I'm a mixed martial artist, you know. And um, I can – I'm good everywhere to fight girls, you know. And these guys, I've fought these guys my whole career, boxing, wrestling kind of style. Though, like, from now to my next – Three fights, they're all the similar. Bill Owens and be exactly the same. Wrestling, boxing, the all Usman, Kobe, they're all the same. You know, I feel like um, we need some new challenges and new different styles to bring more out of it, out of me. You know. And uh, last one for me. I know these guys aren't in your division, but there was a little bit of a scuffle inside the crowd between Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis. I mean, uh, did you get to hear about any of that? I did. Yeah, I saw the video. <laughs> uh, fair play. You know, like Drakus told, shit, you should be able to back it up and. Like I said, Sean's show, show, show a buy, and he did what he did, you know, so fair play to him. Leon, down here to your, your right. Um, you talked about George St. Pierre's record there, um, nine times of defenses, and yeah. this is your second. Do you believe that you have the skill set to surpass that record and become the greatest? 100%, player? 100%. Like, why not? You know, like, no one thought I'd be able to be world champion. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one thought I'd be able to defend it. No one thought I'd be able to do what I'm doing, you know, and, but I've got a solid team behind me, I've got a solid belief in myself, and um, even though I've got a lot of respect for George, but I, I truly believe I can beat that. You know, George mess messaged me last night, um, obviously because of the press conference, so what happened, and just, I was giving advice on how to, like, I was to channel my energy into a positive light, and so i got a lot of respect for him, you know, but I was still a young guy that's trying to chase to beat the great, I, I consider him the GOAT, you know, so I want to surpass him, and I definitely got the skills to do that, you know. And it seemed that you're pretty fluid when it comes to a timeline for a return. UFC 300, April 13th, would that be an amazing opportunity for you? Or? Um, yeah, why not? Why not? Like, but like I said, I want to go home first. If we can get back to like get me a time on the card, that that would be my number one choice to fight fight in the UK again. Um, but if that's an option for 300, then why not? And talking about uh, Sean Strickland, I don't know if you saw him leap to your d defense and uh, defend you about what. Um, yeah, yeah, Cole, I've seen it. But I was, I was like, before the fight, I was like calling like middleweight straight to like fights, and what he said was true. You know, like so I, I might message him after this to say, you know, like fair play to what he said. You know, and um, even though he acts like a mad, a mad guy, but clearly he's got heart. You know, he's a man, and Kobe, Kobe ain't a man. You know, and so um, yeah, fair play to him. And I asked you this before the fight, and I don't know if this has changed since you've shared the octagon with him. Do you think that this adds anything to your legacy, or it's just another guy in the way? I said it before the fight. You know, he's just a just another opponent on my my quest to be the best of all time. You know, and I didn't I didn't take it personal until we said what he said. You know, and um, then it changed it just changed it a lot for me as far as like how to approach the fight. Um, it took a lot for me to like just like switch it all off and. Even like yesterday at the Wayne's, I was still fuming, you know, and, um, but I had to like switch it all off and go out there and compete, you know. Kobe, one here. Um, Coleman Kobe is in here and um, he sort of doubled down in his comments about your late dad just saying you're wild, I feel bad for him. Is that something you, you expect from me after the fight it's just because he's sort of always in character? Uh, I don't know how to answer that, bro, to be honest with you. Here's what it is. Hey, Leon, um, you, you were fainting the knee quite a bit. Um, do you think that made him think twice about wanting to shoot on you? Um, yeah, for sure. Especially last throwing like, like tapes um, to his stomach, and um, yeah, I feel like the fake, the fake in the knee, but because he, he shoots always to the to the right side, to the to the f first hips. So I thought my coach kept saying like, keep the tips going, and keep fake, fake fainting it, you know. And I think especially my stance as well was kind of thrown off his range, so he couldn't get into like a rhythm that like, way way he normally does, you know. And I could see him come from a mile away. He threw the same slow uppercut, the same hook cross. He did the same thing for the whole fight. He just didn't, he didn't come out of his rhythm. He didn't, come out, he didn't do nothing different from what he did he done for the last five fights. You know, I feel like that, that shows that this is a guy that makes excuses for himself. You know, like he blames everyone around him for his, his, his losses. Even Kamaru broke his jaw. He's like, oh, Mark, stop the fight. Just blame Mark for shit. I was like, bro, like... Maybe go back, improve yourself, like work on areas that you, you could improve and come forward, you know. And, but it is what it is. 
you won a lot of awards this week at the at the world's. Uh, I guess how does that feel? You know, fire of the year, knockout of the year, upset of the year. Like, how does that make you feel? Now it feels good, man. It's been like, like two years in pandemic. Remember, they took me out of rankings and all that shit I went through. So now I'm here, um, sitting on top, laughing at everyone, and got my belt, second title defense, winning awards. Um, it feels good. It feels um, it's a credit to me. It's a credit to my team um, for the work we've put in, the belief that we've got in ourselves and no one else did. And um, I am as proud of myself, you know. Which win feels better to you, beating Kamaru or beating Colby? Um, probably beating Kamaru because he was he was the meant to be the goal, you know, and um, to, to head kick him and <laughs> to get it back off him. I think that that defo, no, nothing tops that, you know, and I was a Kobe as a dick. Uh, so that was, that was also a great win. But for us, like, achieving a goal, a lifetime goal, um, being Kamaru um, was the win, you know. And finally for me, if you had your way, you know, there are, there are a few people out there. Who, who's, like, who do you want to fight next? I know you don't really like to call people out. Yeah, but I'm the champ. I don't need to call none of them out, you know. So well, I'll sit back. I'll speak to the UFC, speak to my team. Uh, we'll make a decision. Uh, I'd like to be active, though, you know. I won four twice this year. I'd like to fight three, four times this year. So um, I'll, I'll speak to my team and let's figure it out. Thank you. Thank you.